everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Best of Publisher series here on the Dice Tower. And today we're taking a look at a company called Stronghold Games. Now, Stronghold Games came into being a little over a decade ago, and they were going to republish games. Started by Stephen Bonacore, who you may have seen on the Dice Tower before. Um, Stronghold Games' idea was to find old games and republish them with better components, sometimes revamped rules. And this was a cool idea, and they kind of uh, gave that up a few years into the business of the company and just started publishing sometimes their own games, but they also brought over a lot of games from Europe, having deals with Eggert Spiel, Freedom and Freeze, and more. There's a lot of different games. For the purposes of this list, I took out many of the Freedom and Freeze games because I've already done a best of 2F on this channel, so I took them out, but these are my 10 favorite Stronghold games, even though many of them are reprints and work with other companies. Number 10 is The Bottle Imp. The Bottle Imp is a trick-taking game that is fantastic for three players, and that's, that's kind of a rarity these days. The cards are numbered from one to 30, I think is the highest one, I don't remember what the highest number is, but the colors are then spread throughout that, and as you play cards, you are sometimes winning the bottle because a low card can win you the bottle and can win tricks. By playing low cards, you can win tricks. But if you play too low of a card and you're stuck with the bottle at the end of the game, at the end of a round, you get nothing. It's based on the Robert Louis Stevenson short story. I really love this game. Number nine is Survive Escape from Atlantis. Survive is, this was an, another, re, this is one of their first games that did a reprinting, and this one I know has done very well for the company. Survive, as Atlantis is sinking, you all have people, and you're just jumping off, getting on boats, trying to get to safety while using whales and sharks and, th and just and, uh, sea monsters to attack other people. Visually, it's very striking. It's a family weight game, but it's also the kind of game that's kind of mean towards other people, but since everyone's being mean to each other the entire game. It's less of a problem, I found. A lot of fun. Survive, escape from Atlantis. Number eight is Animals on Board. Here you are Noah's Ark, along with several other Noahs at the table and their arcs. And this is kind of an I split, you choose mechanism, which I think is a great mechanism in games. As you're splitting up these in groups and finally taking them on your arc, you want to get pairs of animals. You don't want more than two, though. That's not great. It's a very lightweight game, but I think it works really well, and it's a fun theme. Number seven is The Boldest. Now, this game has some gorgeous artwork. It takes place in a dystopian future where tech is kind of outdated, or you're finding pieces of tech as if they're treasure. But the game is all about pulling cards off a board, and it's, it's a it's unlike many other games. The designer, she's made a few other games. Uh, this, I think, is her best work. And this is a game that did not get a lot of buzz. But if you see it, it's in the Dice Tower Library for a reason. It's, it's really easy to teach. It has a lot of fun things that you can do. You're collecting cards, using cards to go out and get more. I like it a lot, the boldest. Number six is another early reprint that they did called Code 777. I'm a big fan of deduction games. Code 77 is an old classic where you have a th three-digit code in front of you and you're using question cards to ask people to give you information, like how many red numbers do you see? And someone will say, I see two, and I'm like, okay, so there are three six reds, there are two five reds, you have these little piece of paper, you keep track of all the information. It's easier than many deduction games, but I still like it a lot. Number five game from Stronghold is Stronghold. Yeah, that's not a misspoken thing on my part there. Stronghold, originally published by Portal Games, and the second edition was co-published by a Portal and Stronghold. Uh, this is a cool game, one of my favorite themes, where one person is defending a castle, the other person is the hordes of orcs and trolls that are attacking this tower, this castle. The defender can have, every game is going to be different because the defender will have different types of defenses, um, different, the, uh, the attacker will choose, are they going to use ladders, are catapults going to be used? It's fairly strategic, the game back and forth, and I really like it. It's strong thematic. Number four, another reprint. As you can see, I'm a big fan of the reprints this company does, but this one has not got as much love, and that's Confusion, Espionage, and Deception in the Cold War. I think part of it's the name. But this is a game that's very similar to Stratego if you couldn't see your own pieces. Essentially, I will move a piece in the board, and you will tell me that's a legal move or not. So I might say, I'm going to move it three spaces forward. You can't do that. Great. I know now that this piece is not one of these types of pieces. 
and eventually you know what your pieces are, and your goal is to capture something from your opponent. It's pretty simple, a lot of fun. Uh, it's deduction and strategy mixed into one game. Number three is Core Worlds. There's a lot of deck builders out there. Core Worlds I like a lot. The theming of the game, which is kind of generic fantasy, but really feels like um, the Empire series from Isaac Asimov. These, this game, you are slowly building up and building up and building up as you are trying to conquer planets and take them over and build up, you know, forces that can land on a planet and space forces. It's a little slower than I would like it to be, but it still is a lot of fun, and the first expansion for it really added a lot of cool, neat ideas. If played with two or three people, this is one of the best deck builders out there. It doesn't really go, it's a little too slow when you scale it beyond that. And since he now, the designer, has the rights to his game back, I'm curious what we'll see from this in the future. Number two is one of the silliest games on this list, but I don't care because I love it, and that's Stellar Conflict. Stellar Conflict is one of the fastest games that exists. You have a deck of cards. You're going to put some asteroids on the table. Your cards are ships. You say go. You're flipping cards, and you put it anywhere on the table. Once someone's out of cards, everyone else has to kind of put their cards down as fast as they can, and then you spend time scoring the game. Each ship has a little gun sh pointing off it. There are ships on cards with a little laser shooting off it. You follow the laser, see what it hits. If it hits other ships, you can blow them up. Some ships have special abilities. Some ships have shields. Sometimes if your ship hits, shoots at a uh, an asteroid, you mine points off of it. It's really well done. It's based on a game called Lightspeed from James Ernest, published by Cheap Ass Games a while ago. But this version, I think, is a really cool version. A lot of people don't talk about it, so you should check it out. And number one, well, this was a pretty easy choice here. It's kind of a tie um, because there's similar games, and that's Terraforming Mars or Ares Expedition. Now, to be clear, I know that Ares Expedition and Terraforming Mars are two very different games. In my top 100, uh, Ares Expedition, the card game version of Terraforming Mars, but it also has a lot of DNA with Race for the Galaxy, is ranked much higher. So I guess that's my technical number one. I just didn't want to make number one Ares Expedition and number two Terraforming Mars. But if it makes you feel any better, then you can pretend that's just exactly what happened. But this game, I remember when I first saw Terraforming Mars, I was like, eh, it looks okay. And then I played it, and I really enjoyed it. It is a marvelous game. And I think Ares Expedition for me is a little better because it gives a lot of the same feeling, but also has that fun race for the galaxy mechanism. But they're both fabulous games. Terraforming Mars kind of put Stronghold on the map. People knew about them from Survive, uh, but Terraforming Mars is what cemented Stronghold to be such a, a big enough company uh, and powerful enough company that Indie Boards and Cards bought them a few years ago. Will the Stronghold game last? name last now that any boards and cards has bought it? Because they're, they're essentially the same company at this point. We're going to have to wait and see. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But for this video, these are my 10 favorite Stronghold games. What's yours? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching the Best of Publisher series on the Dice Tower.